G'day, well it's Scott Pekin, I'm the CEO and founder of Wealth Migrate and someone that passionately believes that technology can solve some of the greatest challenges on the planet. You know, my, my personal mission statement is to create a world of wealth, health and happiness by having lots of fun and inspiring growth and change. And really what motivated me to make this video was yesterday my wife and I were driving around trying to speak to people that were deeply affected by the fires. And it was a very difficult experience actually when you when you see real people and real problems. You know, when you watch Carte Blanche and when you hear about 408 homes having burnt and 58% of them not having insurance, it's statistics. But unfortunately when it's real people and real problems, I think that real people need to be involved in finding real solutions. And so I'm actually here and you can see I'm literally at uh, one of the properties. There's my wife and son behind me. I mean, you can see the type of, of devastation. And you know, the news, the news has stopped. The uh, people aren't talking about it anymore. But what hasn't stopped is for the people whose lives have been deeply affected. You know, yesterday we met Herman, who's a gentleman in his late 60s. He couldn't come on the camera. He was, he was just uh, crying and crying about the experience. He nearly died in the fire. He lost his family home his dream home with everything in it, with no insurance. And you know, people, you, you forget to think, you know, if you've got no money and you literally are retired, what, what do you buy next? Do you buy a toothbrush? Do you buy a toaster? You know, let alone trying to rebuild your home or, you know, as he said, even, you know, buy a new pair of pants. And so my request is that the fires might have gone, but the tragedy is very much still here. And I don't believe that we've done enough. And I think there's three things that people need to understand. The first one is that the government has come in and they're doing in a tremendous amount. Uh, there were over 200 informal homes that were burnt and they're replacing them. And as you can see up on the hills there, and I don't know if you can see them, they look like, they look like runways. Um, so you can see at the top of the hill there, um, and if I go around to the feather bed side, you can almost see all the way down there on the, on the feather bed side, uh, down there, you can see, where's my finger there? They're like runways. And basically what they're doing there is they're putting up these hessian mats up the hills to stop the mudslides. So again, the, the, the council will pay for the mudslide equipment, but there's not enough people to actually install them. So only wealthy people can pay to actually have it uh, put up. I, I had uh, breakfast this morning with a, with a good friend of mine who's the vet here. And um, you know, unfortunately, they don't have the manpower to put it in. So you know, again, private people, private solutions, they've got the materials, they just don't have the people to put it in place. And people are now really worried about literally mudslides uh, taking them out in the night when, when it rains. You know, another example, we were, we were in Plet yesterday and they were talking about the, you know, we we're on a farm and all the farm animals were saved, luckily, by the grace, uh, grace of God. But, but, you know, what's really interesting is that all the, all the fences burnt down. And so, again, the municipality will pay for the fences. But what's interesting is that the people have to pay for the fences first. Then they'll come and inspect them. Then they'll be refunded. But what people don't realize is that, you know, people in this part of the world don't have a lot of excess capital. So they don't even have the capital to, to go and build, you know. And then thirdly, and, and probably more traumatically, is that you know, when you walk around and, and you look at something like this, and you see you know, this type of solution, there are so many people that are in this situation. And yes, granted, there's, there's people that have got insurance and are getting their houses rebuilt. But then there's, and there's, and there's you know, the informal homes that are getting rebuilt. But it's the middle class, and often it's the elderly um, who've lost their jobs in many instances, who've, who've lost their ability to make income. And, and don't actually really have a way to, to rebuild their homes and all their lives. You know, some of the young people can, you know, maybe leave and you know, go work on an oil rig in Sweden or Norway or something. But if you're in your late 60s, you're retired to Nisner, this was, your, this, was your, this was your place of peace. And so my request to all of you is let's do more. You know, this crowdfunding thing, I better make sure that a piece of metal doesn't land on my head. <laughs> but um, we need to do more, ladies and gentlemen. We haven't done enough. We've raised a couple of hundred thousand rand we're going to make a bit of an impact on people's lives. But my wife's commitment uh, to you guys is that we are going to deal with real people and real solutions. We're going to bring you real people with real solutions. And, you know, hopefully it won't be then just numbers. It won't be charities. Even Gift to the Givers have been incredible. They've donated 100 tons of building material. But the problem is it's, it's still stuck somewhere. It hasn't logistically arrived. People's houses are not being built. And, you know, many people's homes sit like this or at best have been demolished. And it's now more than two months, nearly going on three months, and they haven't even started rebuilding, let alone their homes, uh, even their lives. So I believe that we can do more. I believe that technology can solve this problem. I believe that through real people and real solutions, we can make a plan. And, you know, my wife runs 
Santa Shoebox on for the whole of the garden route here. She does it on a voluntary basis. Uh, she's, she's got the broad-based reach on the ground to know who needs the help. And, um, you know, my role, I think, is to, with her, go and find real people, go and find real problems, and to make them visual to the world and for all of us to find, visual, um, you know, real solutions. And so, as the uh, South African flag blows behind me, the Nisner heads in the background, I think all of us, whether we're South Africans locally, whether we're expats abroad, whether we have an inkling or a love for this country, we need to do something about the people. And this is bigger than people think, and we need to find solutions. My challenge to you is let's again use technology to solve the world's greatest challenges. We can do it, we just have to care enough. Cheers.